Hello everyone, welcome to uh, our Maundy Thursday service from St John's Walton with Reverend Matthew Hunter. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and also with you. Our Lord Jesus Christ says, If you love me, keep my commandments. Unless I wash you, you have no part in me. Let us confess to Almighty God our sins against his love and ask him to cleanse us. We keep a few moments quiet. Have mercy on us, O God, in your great goodness. According to the abundance of your compassion, blot out our offences. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Against you only have we sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Purge us from our sin, and we shall be clean. Wash us, and we shall be whiter than snow. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father forgive us by the death of his Son, and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. And because we've come to the um, end of Lent, we resume the Gloria. Please do join in if you know the words. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, You take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray that we may love one another as Christ has loved us. God, our Father, you have invited us to share in the supper which your Son gave to his church to proclaim his death until he comes. May he nourish us by his presence and unite us in his love, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We come now to our first reading which is from the 12th chapter of the Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months, and it shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, It shall join its closest neighbour in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year-old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. 
you shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we come next to our Gospel reading. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. I give you a new commandment, says the Lord. Love one another as I have loved you. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, that he had come from God and was going to God, got himself up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you shall have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, he put on his robe and had returned to the table. He said to them, Do you know what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if you, sorry, so if I, your teacher and Lord, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you should also do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. And when he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It's curious, um, I don't think it's just a quirk of the lectionary, I think this is the, the standard reading set for Monday Thursday, but on the the date where we most especially mark the uh, the institution of the Lord's Supper, unless, of course, you keep um, Corpus Christi. Um, the, the day within the, I guess, the, the mainstream church calendar that isn't you know, an additional festival, where we remember the point where Jesus breaks the, the bread and the wine symbolically for the first time with his disciples, we actually get the account from John where that isn't um, explicitly done. And I think that's partly because John's Eucharistic uh, theology is situated elsewhere in the text. So whereas in uh, Mark and Matthew and Luke, you have the the Last Supper during the the Passion Week, as we call it, uh, for John, his uh, symbolic action for Jesus at this point is the the washing of the feet. And in some ways, I think that's (laughs) doubly appropriate for our coronavirus um, period, 
because this is a time when the church um, isn't meeting together collectively for the Eucharist. And also it's a period where washing is absolutely at the forefront of all our, our thoughts in terms of preventing infection. And I think it's quite a useful metaphor or symbol as well, because the Eucharist, um, to use a slightly inappropriate but quite churchy phrase, isn't necessarily everyone's um, cup of tea. Um, Not everyone who comes to our services uh, necessarily receives the bread and the wine. They might come up for a blessing instead. They might be um, working towards confirmation. A couple of our young people were due to do so um, this year. Unfortunately, that's probably going to be delayed now. But wherever we are in our Christian journeys, or to put it more broadly, in our spiritual paths, um, the Eucharist can be something which is um, a bit of a an insider activity. I guess it also has to be said that notoriously, um, churchgoers don't tend to like volunteering for foot washing on Monday Thursday. It's not something that I think we've done um, in my time, at least at St John's, we didn't do it last year. I don't think we did it in Hexham, and um, in in Halifax, the the vicar had to pretty much press gang people into being involved. You might be relieved to learn that uh, I won't be live streaming a, a foot washing, as I haven't been live streaming a Eucharist. I guess it's reach individual priests to make their own mind up, but I wasn't completely comfortable with the idea of what might amount to a private celebration of the Eucharist at home. Um, I I think, for me at least, it's more appropriate to keep that moment for when we meet again. And there is something about the, the, the Last Supper, the Passover meal, which is intrinsically about reunion and looking forward to a future moment where once more we come together. But perhaps, if it's not too um, odd a thing to say, the next time you you wash your feet, rather than being able to be um, brought together by an act of bread and wine, perhaps we can substitute, just for once, the foot washing. And as you wash your own feet, think of what Jesus has done for you. We come now to the next part of our service, which actually is a suggestion to have the foot washing accompanied. So I'm just going to sing a short Teze chant, which is entitled Ubi Caritas, which I think, strictly speaking, means where there is charity but it can also mean where there is love. Where there is love, God truly is. Ubi caritas et amor Ubi caritas Deus ubi est Ubi caritas et amor Ubi caritas Deus ibi est I know people tend to <laughs> sing in the shower. Um, perhaps you could... Just below those words, and if you find it coming back to yourself, perhaps give it a sing as well. Lord Jesus Christ, you have taught us that what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we do also for you. Give us the will to be the servant of others, as you are the servant of all, and gave up your life and died for us, but are alive and reign, now and forever. Amen. And now, in the power of the Spirit, let us pray to the Father, through Christ, the Saviour of the world. And the response to Lord, hear us, 
is actually very variable, so <laughs> I'll just say that myself. Father, on this night, the night he was betrayed, your son Jesus Christ washed his disciples' feet. We commit ourselves to follow his example of love and service. Lord, hear us and humble us. On this night, he prayed for his disciples to be one. We pray for the unity of your church. Lord, hear us and unite us. On this night, he prayed for those who were to believe through his disciples' message. We pray for the mission of your church. Lord, hear us and renew our zeal. On this night, he commanded his disciples to love, but suffered rejection himself. We pray for the rejected and unloved. Lord, hear us and fill us with your love. On this night, he reminded his disciples that if the world hated them, it hated him first. We pray for those who are persecuted for their faith. Lord, hear us and give us your peace. On this night, he accepted the cup of death and looked forward to the new wine of the kingdom. We remember those who have died in the peace of Christ. We particularly pray for all those who have passed away during this period. Lord, hear us and welcome all your children into paradise. As we're um, not having communion, we're effectively coming to a conclusion with the peace. Jesus says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. So we share a sign of peace. And if you're um, with someone um, listening to this, please do feel free to share the peace. Now, traditionally, towards the end of the Monday Thursday service, you have the stripping of the sanctuary, which is where um, the various elements that um, decorate the church are removed, perhaps put in the vestry, and these come out again on Holy Saturday as we prepare our church for worship on Easter Sunday. And I guess the idea is that for Good Friday, the the, the most solemn, uh, bleakest point in Holy Week, that the church is um, stripped back to the absolute basics so I'm going to conclude with the words that would have accompanied that action. How lonely sits the city that once was full of people. How like a widow she has become, she that was great among the nations. She weeps bitterly in the night with tears on her cheeks. Among all her lovers she has no one to comfort her. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, return to the Lord your God. The roads to Zion mourn, for no one comes to the festivals. All her gates are desolate, her priests groan. Her young girls grieve, and her lot is bitter. Her children have gone away, captives before the foe. Is it nothing to you, all you who pass by? Look and see if there is any sorrow like my sorrow. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, return to the Lord your God. From on high he sent fire, he went deep into my bones. He spread a net for my feet, he turned me back. He has left me stunned, faint all day long. For these things I weep, my eyes flow with tears. For a comforter is far from me, one to revive my courage. My children are desolate, for the enemy has prevailed. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, return to the Lord your God. All who pass along the way clap their hands at you. They hiss and wag their heads at door to Jerusalem. Is this the city that was called the perfection of beauty, the joy of all the earth? The thought of my affliction and homelessness is wormwood and gall. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, return to the Lord your God. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercy has never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. 
The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, return to the Lord your God. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for one to bear the yoke in youth, to sit alone in silence when the Lord has imposed it, to put one's mouth to the dust, there may yet be hope, to give one's cheek to the smiter and be filled with insults, for the Lord will not reject forever. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, return to the Lord your God. They went out to the Mount of Olives. Jesus prayed to the Father, If it is possible, take this cup of suffering from me. He said to his disciples, How is it that you are not able to keep watch with me for one hour? The hour has come for the Son of Man to be handed over to the power of sinners. Christ was obedient unto death. Go in his peace. So we'll rejoin together tomorrow for the liturgy of Good Friday.